So today I will speak about uh, the an introduction to the uh, novel coronavirus COVID-19 uh, disease uh, that we're facing uh, currently in the in the whole world. So uh, I have no financial disclosures. Um, so this is this is, these are the objectives of my of my talk today. So we'll talk initially about the history of previous pandemics, definitions, uh, epidemiology, and statistics from around the world, and specifically to COVID-19, uh, we'll speak about uh, we'll talk about the virology, the clinical features, diagnostics, and um, and treatment options. So how did we get here? Uh, what is the sequence of events? On the 31st of December, Chinese authority informed WHO, China Office of Pneumonia Cases, uh, a cluster of pneumonia cases in Wuhan city in Hubei uh, province in China, and with, with an unknown cause. Uh, next day, on January 1st, uh, officials in China were able to pinpoint uh, the uh, the uh, that the cases or the clusters a cluster of these diseases uh, to Hunan seafood market and Wuhan city uh, and they suspected that the source of this disease lays in that um, seafood market so they closed down that market on January 3rd uh, China reports a total of 44 suspected uh, patients with mis this mystery disease on January 7th, China identified uh, a new coronavirus as the cause of this outbreak. On the 9th, China reports the first death. On, on January 15th, uh, Japan and Thailand reports their first case. On the 20th of January, South Korea confirmed its first case of what was called at that time 2019th NCOV or uh, novel coronavirus. Uh, and that patient did not report uh, visiting the market in Wuhan, which raised the concern about uh, community trans, uh, uh, community infection uh, or community transmission. On the 21st of January, WHO confirmed human-to-human -human transmission of the virus uh, with the total number of cases, uh, 22 cases, including infection among, among, uh, among healthcare workers. On the 22nd, the cases doubled to 580 cases with a death toll of 17 patients. On the 23rd of January, the city of Wuhan shut down all public transportation. Multiple other cities throughout China went into lockdown. Singapore uh, confirms its first uh, imported cases from China. Vietnam confirms two cases. On the 24th, Japan and the US each confirmed a second case of this novel coronavirus. Nepal uh, confirmed its first case. On the 21st of January, Australia confirms its first case. France uh, confirmed three cases and the first in Europe. Malaysia confirmed uh, first four cases and Canada reports a, ca a case. Next day, uh, the 2019th uh, novel coronavirus reached the Middle East for the first time with the United Arab Emirates reporting the first imported cases. Uh, 27th of January, Cambodia, Germany, and Sri Lanka each confirmed their first cases. China reports now 1,771 new confirmed cases, which more than doubled than the cases on January 26th. Total confirmed cases in China uh, raised to 4,515 and 4,580 cases globally. On the 29th, China reports 760 new confirmed cases and 2,800 globally. On the 3rd, 31st of January, the U.S. declared that the 2019 NCOV uh, outbreak, a public health emergency, UK, Russia, Sweden, and Spain also confirmed their first cases. On the 3rd of February, China launched a clinical trial of uh, remdesivir, which is an antiviral agent. On the 11th of Feb February, um, WHO assigned the novel coronavirus its official name. Uh, so the virus was called the SARS-CoV-2 and the disease was named as COVID-19. The 19th of February, Iran reports, reports its first COVID-19 case. The 2nd of March, Saudi Arabia confirmed its first case uh, of a Saudi national re returning from Iran via Bahrain. On the 7th of March, the number of the COVID-19 cases uh, was more than 100,000 cases. On the 11th of March, WHO declared the global COVID-19 as pandemic. And this is a, uh, a, a um, map that shows the spread of coronavirus, and you can see it's almost have spread throughout the world. 
today, we have 1,216,000 cases around the world. U.S. Uh, has the most cases, 300,000 cases. Spain, 130,000 cases. Italy has 124,000 cases. Also, as you can see here, uh, there was 65,000 uh, uh, total deaths reported so far and about a quarter of a million uh, recoveries. So what are the coronaviruses? The coronavirus is a family of RNA viruses that has the characteristic corona-like, uh, uh, crown-like viral uh, particles on their surface. And this is where they get the name corona. Um, the name of the virus that's causing the pandemic is a, the SARS-CoV-2, which is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. Which, ca which causing the COVID-19 disease. So the name of the disease is COVID-19, which stands for Coronavirus Disease of 2019. There are multiple coronaviruses that affect humans. Uh, coronavirus usually lives in mammals, uh, especially bats, uh, but there are some human coronaviruses that affect human and transfer, uh, uh, and transfer between humans. The first four, uh, coronaviruses here are usually cause only mild disease, mainly a common cold. The last third uh, three case, uh, three viruses, so the SARS uh, virus and the MERS COVID virus and the SARS CoV 2 virus cause usually moderate to severe diseases. Um, this is not the first pandemic that we face as, as, as humans. The last pandemic that we faced was the H1N1 influenza A pandemic in 2009-2010, which caused uh, an estimation of 100,000 to 500,000 deaths. And before that, we had the HIV pandemic, which started in 1976 and still going on uh, and caused about 36 million deaths. Before that, the influenza A, H3, H3N2, or Hong Kong flu in 1968, which caused about 1 million deaths. The Asian flu, which is the H2N2, caused about 2 million deaths and was 1956 to 1958. And before that is the infamous Spanish flu, uh, H1N1 uh, influenza, which caused the 1918 to 1919 pandemic, which caused about 20 to 50 million deaths. And before that was the six cholera pandemic and the bu bubonic plague or the Black Death. So we learned about social distancing effects and how we can flatten the curve from the 1918 pandemic. And it's a tale of two cities in the US, in the United States. So Philadelphia and St. Louis both was hit with that pandemic. Philadelphia did not apply social distancing until about a month from their first case. However, St. Louis applied social distancing two days after the their first case. As, as you can see here, the effect was, was um, clear. So in Philadelphia, they had a lot more deaths and they had a lot more cases in a very short period of time. Uh, while St. Louis, they flattened the curve. They have a more flat curve rather than a peak in cases. And that resulted in protecting St. Louis healthcare system from collapsing. Uh, Philadelphia had uh, issues with, with the influx of patients because they did not apply epidemiological um, social distancing, distancing intervention. And, they, and, and as a result, they had um, uh, a lot of uh, patients which overwhelmed their healthcare system. This is our situation in Saudi Arabia. Currently, we have 2,370 cases uh, with 420 recoveries and 28 deaths. As you can see, Riyadh has the most cases of seven, 710 cases. Mecca has 465 cases. Jeddah followed that with 339 cases and Medina has 238 cases. As you can see, our first case was in March uh, 1st. And as you can see, we, had, we start to have more cases as time going. We had a peak here but we're not sure if this is the actual peak or not, because I'll show you uh, in the next slide why. So we had 205 cases here. Today we had 149 cases, 180 cases yesterday. This is from the Ministry of Health uh, uh, COVID-19 page. 
Um, this is a chart that uh, uh, I have uh, created with one of my friends. Uh, as you can see here, the local cases are going up as we as we go throughout the um, throughout March and April. And in blue, this is the imported cases. So imported cases initially was the highest number. And as time surpassed, passed, we start to have more community uh, 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 transmit, which we call, they call it al-mukhalatin. As you can see, this is, this is the, what we saw in the previous um, uh, chart, the 20, 20, uh, first uh, cases, uh, the peak was in here, but we're not sure if this is the, this is um, actually our peak or not. We have to have uh, more days uh, and more data to, to assess if that's a peak. So I'll talk about uh, an epidemiological uh, uh, way to assess the infectivity of the disease. Uh, we call this the R0 or, or R0. So the R0 or R0 uh, means uh, it's the average number of people that one person with a virus infects. As you can see here, the COVID-19 estimated between 2 to 2.5. This is the number that's going around, but actually the estimate, estimation depends on, on the country. So the estimates now is between 1.4 to 5.7. And we are, we, we're not sure about the R0 for the COVID-19. We will know exactly what is the R0 or the R0 of the COVID-19 after this pandemic passes and after we get all the data. So what does this mean? Let's, let's say that we have an R0 or R0 of COVID-19 of 2.5. That means if you have one patient, this patient got the COVID-19 or the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it will spread it to 2.5 patient after the incubation period, which is between five to six days. After five days, the 2.5 patients or three patients will spread it to, to 2.5, which will come, become six. So 2.5 by 2.5 will be about six patients. And this will become, after five days, it will infect 15 patients. After five days, it will infect 38 patients. And then they will infect 97 patients. And they will infect, two, each patient will infect 2.5 patients, which will become 244, then 610, and 1,500 then 3,800 3, and so forth until they get to 59,000 uh, patients within six weeks. So one patient can cause 59,000 infection within six weeks if you don't contain them. And so this is the total confirmed cases um, in the world. As you can see, the curves are different between different um, countries. As you can see, the United States, Spain, and Italy, uh, those, those countries have not um, applied social distancing early on, early in the, in the um, after their first case. And as you can see, they have a very steep curve in comparison to South Korea here. Uh, also, um, uh, also Saudi Arabia, you can see our curve is, is less steep than United States, Spain, or Italy. This is also in comparison to China, Japan, and South Korea. And you can see the difference is when they applied the nation's nationwide lockdown. So I can see here, Belgium and India applied their lockdown early on. China as well applied the lockdown also very early in the course of the disease. Um, but Spain and um, Italy, have applied late, very late in the course of the disease. And you can see that's why they have a very steep, and France as well, they have very steep um, curves. And that's why they have way more cases and they double, they double their deaths, the death rate almost every two days. Whereas China, South Korea, and Japan, and Saudi Arabia also, they have less deaths uh, because they have a more flat curve. What matters when applying the social distancing intervention and epidemiological intervention is when you apply the intervention. So this is, this is an example of, of having an R0 of 2.5. As you can see here, if you apply your all, all measures, the total of your, um, the total uh, infection, the total population that will be infected with the virus will be about 5% in comparison to, to about 10% if you had two weeks delay 
or 25% with three weeks delay, 45% with four weeks delay, and at five weeks, it's almost 60%, which is similar to all, if you have only partial um, social distancing, only with social cl uh, school closure. If you do nothing, it will infect about 65% of the patient, of, of your whole population. So this is what matters. What, ma what matters is when did you apply the social distancing? So that's why um, Saudi Arabia, an example, they applied the social distancing measures right after the, before the, they start applying the, the social distancing before even the first case. Um, this is also the trajectories uh, of some of the uh, uh, countries. Um, so as you can see, the trajectory of Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, and South Korea, which they have um, very strict epidemiological interventions in comparison, comparison to Italy, Spain, and the US. This is the, the, the trajectory of Saudi Arabia in comparison to United St States, Spain, Italy, Turkey, and Iran. All of these, the reason why I keep mentioning these, these countries because they had delays in the intervention, uh, their epidemiological intervention and social distancing. As you can see here, China, they flattened the curve and now they have, they're going down on the curve, which means that they, their cases are going down and they, they have less cases per day uh, as the time passes. Uh, the good news with Saudi Arabia, they can see the curve here is a start to flatten out but we need more time to assess if we will have increase or will continue uh, with a flat curve with, with the current measures. So what did Saudi Arabia done, have done so far? On the 27th of February, Saudi Arabia announced a temporary suspension of entry of individual wanting to perform the Umrah uh, pilgrimage. And on the 28th of February, the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia announced a temporary suspension of entry of uh, GCC citizens to Mecca and Medina. On the 2nd of March, Saudi Arabia confirmed the first case of Saudi national returning from Iran. On the 5th of March, uh, precaution uh, steps regarding the Great Mosque of Mecca and Prophet uh, Muhammad Mosque uh, have uh, implemented, which included temporary daily closure of the Great Mosque for sterilization purposes. On the 7th of March, all sports competitions would held behind closed door. On the 8th of March, all transports uh, uh, in and out of Qatif, which was at that time, considered the first uh, uh, endemic areas uh, in Saudi Arabia was halted. On the 8th of March, suspension of all schools and universities. On the 14th of March, all sports competition would be suspended, closure of all stadium sports centers and gyms. On the 14th of March, they, we clo they closed all amusement parks, entertainment zones, and the malls. Also, they banned all social events, uh, including funerals and weddings. On the 15th, they closed uh, all of shopping malls, restaurants, coffee shops, public parks, with the exception of pharmacies and supermarkets. On the 19th of March, they're su suspending holding daily prayers and the weekly Friday prayer. On the 20th of March, suspended entry of prayers to the general public at the two holy mosques of Mecca and Medina. On the 23rd of March, the nationwide, uh, nationwide curfew implemented from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. and barring entry of exit to Riyadh, Mecca, and Medina. On the 26th of March, curfew extended to start at 3 p.m. And recently, the curfew was extended also to become 24 hours in Mecca and Medina and Jeddah as well. What is the incubation period of uh, COVID-19? We um, really don't know yet, uh, but so far the number that been um, uh, uh, adapted by WHO and CDC is two to 14 days, but there are reports that can extend to 21 days and some reports also that extend up to 37 days. But those are still reports, so we don't know, uh, but we're going with the CDC and WHO, which uh, states it's between two and 14 days from exposure. The mean, um, mean incubation period is between five and six days. The mode of transmission, transmission of the virus is either respiratory droplet or fomite. Uh, fomite, uh, uh, the virus can live up to 24 hours on cardboard or uh, less than 20, 72 hours on plastic or steel. It can be also airborne during, uh, during uh, performing uh, aerosol, aerosol uh, generating procedure. So the aerosolized particle can last for three hours in air. 
So when patient is on high flow or BiPAP or the patient getting intubated or coughing, they, those, those particles can be aerosolized and can last for three hours. The symptoms of the, uh, um, the, the presenting symptom of COVID patients, uh, the most common symptom is fever, which uh, is reported between 83 to 98%. Then fatigue, 70% of the time, dry cough between 46 and 82%, shortness of breath up to 31%, and myalgia 11 to 44%. Also, there are some other symptoms, uh, such as pharyngitis, headache, productive cough, GI symptoms, hemoptysis, anosmia, aguesia, which is uh, loss of taste, and pink eye. GI symptoms have been reported to be the only presenting symptoms in some of the COVID patients, so patients can present only with GI symptoms. Also, there are some reports with anosmia being the only presenting symptom as well. COVID-19, uh, most of the COVID-19 patients will have will be asymptomatic or experience only mild symptoms, which is 80% of the patients. 15% of the patient will have medium symptoms, which is um, can require uh, admission, such as uh, shortness of breath, hypoxia, pneumonia. 5% of the patient will be severe or critical and requires ICU admissions. The overall mortality uh, rate of COVID-19 varies between countries. Uh, currently, it's between 2.3 to 3.8 percent. As you can see, it's diff it, it varies between also within China. Like in, in Wuhan, the um, mortality rate was up to 5.8 percent. Yubai province was 3.1 percent, and nationwide in China was 2.1 percent. South Korea has 0.9 percent, and Italy was is reported up to 7.2 percent. As you can see in this video, you can see that the mortality rate changes with time. This is the time, this is the date. Okay, so as you can see, China has been hovering between one and between two percent. But watch Italy, Iran, and France here. So Italy, as the time passes, the mortality rate was getting worse and worse and worse. So now it's about 10% here. Same thing with France and same thing with with uh, uh, Spain. South Korea have maintained the same mortality throughout, throughout time. The same thing with China. I'm going to replay the video again. As you can see, China here, it will stay within 2% and then it will go up to 5% at the end. South Korea will stay within the same percentage. But Italy, France, and Spain, they're getting worse by the time. So there are some explanations for this. And it's also explain why we have variable mortality um, uh, throughout the world. One of the explanation is that uh, healthcare system, uh, when your healthcare system is uh, stretched thin uh, or collapsing uh, or overwhelmed, it, the mortality rate will go up. If you don't have enough ventilators or you don't have enough ICU beds, your mort mortality rate is going to go up. And that's re the reason why flattening the curve is really, really important. Uh, the other explanation of the very low rate of South Korea is that South Korea have had a massive um, testing. So they've tested a lot of their patient population, uh, a lot of their population, and they catch way a lot more of the asymptomatic carriers and the people with the mild symptoms. So that's why they have an extremely low mortality, mortality rate, that, and what, that's what explains South Korea's numbers. COVID-19 has a mortality rate in comparison to the other coronaviruses, uh, such as SARS. The SARS mortality rate was about 9.6%, and mers uh, has a... So, as you can see here, the mortality, what the, um, the risk factor for severe illness and mortality are age and co comorbidities. As you can see here, mortality rates goes up with age as, as you have, an, uh, as you get old, your mortality risk goes up um, with COVID-19. Uh, patient above 80 years uh, of age has a mortality rate of 14.8%. Uh, patient above 60 has 3.6%. And patient less than 40, they have 0.4%. And it goes down until, like as you can see here, 0 to 9%, uh, 0 to 9 years old, they have no fatality so far. And this is all report from from those are from the reports from China. We don't have 
I don't have the reports from Italy uh, yet. Um, the comorbidities uh, that is associated with, with mortality are cardiovascular diseases, chronic respiratory disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, chronic kidney disease, and cancer, with cardiovascular disease have, having um, the highest risk of mortality, are associated with the higher risk of mortality. One of the other mortality, uh, coma, uh, one of the things that also can increase risk of mortality is smoking. Diagnostics, uh, so we have two ways of diagnos diagnosing um, COVID-19. Uh, the first, and which is considered the gold standard as, uh, as of now, is the reverse transcript uh, tra transcription polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR, of a nasopharyngeal swab. The other way is serologic testing, which is still under development in the U.S. Start, some of the centers in the United States start to have uh, IgG and IgM serological testing right now. So the limitation of RT-PCR, its sensitivity of this test depends on the technique. Uh, uh, also, it depends on the viral load. So asymptomatic patient might have uh, lower sensitivity of RT-PCR. And, um, and because of that, single negative RT-PCR does, uh, uh, does not exclude COVID-19. Chest X-ray uh, is considered the first line uh, imaging modality. It shows usually patient commonly, the, the common um, sign for COVID on chest X-ray is bilateral peripheral and lower zone airspace opacities. Uh, or consolidation. Um, however, 38 30% of patients admitted for COVID-19 had uh, an initial normal test, uh, chest x-ray. And that put the sensitivity of this imaging modality to 59%. As you can see here, th these are two uh, x-rays of um, patient with confirmed COVID disease, and you can see there's some consolidation in here and also peripherally, as you can see here, same thing in here. For CT scan, uh, CT scan is more sensitive than chest X-ray. Uh, most common finding is patchy peripheral and basal ground glass opacities, and CT scan has a sens sensitivity of 86%. Those are the ground glass opacities uh, that can be seen on CT scan here and here, and most of them are peripheral and lower. However, the utility of CT scan um, is questionable because it often will not change your management. If you, have, if you suspect a COVID-19 patient, um, CT scan usually will not change your management. Also, it's associated with unnecessary risks. So the risks that's associated with, with uh, CT scan are staff exposure, risk of transmission and transit, and requires decontamination uh, of radiology equipment, which is time consuming. Usually the indications for CT scan is either to rule out abscess or empyema, and also this is questionable because you can probably use point of care ultrasound uh, to uh, rule out abscess or empyema. The other, the other um, maybe more, um, uh, the indication that makes a bit more sense is ruling out other causes of hypoxemia, hypoxemia such as pulmonary embolism. Also, PEs or pulmonary, em pulmonary embolism have been reported to have uh, uh, COVID-19 patients are being has has higher risk of having uh, venous thromboembolism. So, this indication makes sense. Um, this indication, if you don't the point of care ultrasound, if you have if you if you're skillful in it you might be able to rule it out, but if you can't, then you have to scan those patients. The treatment for asymptomatic or mild uh, patients, uh, usually analgesic or antipyretics, uh, there are some reports that uh, NSAIDs are associated with high mortality, but the evidence uh, of increased mortality, but the evidence is still out there. We don't have strong evidence to support that. However, some, some guidelines um, recommend avoiding it. Uh, the more important step in management is self-isolation, and it depends on the resources. So currently in Saudi Arabia, we, we COVID patient, COVID positive patient, they uh, uh, can be sent to MOH quarantine in hotels. Uh, but if that, if you don't have um, uh, that set up uh, at your place, they can you can ask the patient to self-isolate at home, which is probably the most critical 
step in the management for prevention of, of the spread in the community. For severe and critical patients, uh, they will need supportive care, which can be intubation, mechanical ventilation, or ECMO in some patients. Uh, also, in those patients, you want to, you would need to avoid hypervolemia, which can increase the risk of worsening ARDS. Pharmacotherapy, uh, lipunavir and uh, ritunavir uh, uh, have been tested uh, in COVID-19. They've been used in China. Uh, they are both an anti high, uh, antiretroviral uh, medications, and um, the evidence so far suggests against its use in COVID-19. Uh, however, it made it in some guidelines, uh, but the surviving sepsis campaign, at least they suggest against using it. Remedesivir is, uh, uh, have been developed as a treatment option for Ebola virus. It is an adenosine nucleotide analog, which interferes with the action uh, of viral RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. In vitro study shows activity against SARS-CoV-2 and MERS-CoV. And currently, there is two phase three clinical trials in Wuhan and the U.S. investigating its efficacy against SARS-CoV-2. This is the most promising um, treatment that we have so far, uh, and hopefully, we'll find uh, positive results uh, in, the, in those clinical trials. Chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. There are some benefits reported in vitro studies and low quality observational studies. Also, there is a study, uh, a clinical, an open label uh, clinical trial have shown that the addition of azithromycin to hydroxychloroquine shows benefits in small, non-randomized trial. The effects of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine usually inhibits viral entry by inhibiting the synthesis of sialic acid, inhibition of viral release into the host cell by blocking endosomal acidification, and reduction of viral infectivity by inhibiting protein glycosylation, glycosylation and uh, protolytic mat uh, maturation of viral proteins. This is the guideline uh, from the Ministry of Health. Uh, as you can see here, um, for severe patients, they advise for supportive care, ICU admission, uh, consult infectious disease, and antiviral therapy. They advise on starting hydroxychloroquine in severe cases and to consider it in mild cases, mild to moderate cases. Also, if it's not available to start uh, chloroquine uh, for those patients. Also, um, if that's not available, you can consider alternative therapy, which is lopinavir and uh, ritonavir for seven days. Um, avoid ibuprofen. And this is some of the labs that they um, suggest. A very important point, if you're going to use chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, make sure that you check ECG uh, to make sure that the QTC are normal, and also you have to screen them for G6PD uh, uh, if chloroquine is going to be used because it can cause hemolysis in those patients. This is um, also a guideline from uh, Brigham and Women um, Hospital uh, in the U.S., the same thing. They suggest hydroxychloroquine, also consider remedesivir, but this remedesivir is not available everywhere. It's not definitely not available in Saudi Arabia as of now. Uh, because it's Harvard hospitals are involved in um, the clinical trial. That's why they have it, and that's why they suggest it. But if it's not available to consider hydroxychloroquine, which is similar to what the Ministry of Health in Saudi Arabia are considering. Uh, also, they suggest um, if the patient has signs and symptoms of uh, very severe disease, uh, which uh, can be considered as, as a that have developed secondary HLH to consider uh, tocolizumab uh, as well. The other therapeutics that have been suggested um, in some guidelines uh, such, uh, are statins, um, uh, which have been uh, suggested that can be cardioprotective. Tocilizumab, which is a monoclonal antibody to IL-6, uh, IL and interleukin-6, which treats cytokine release syndrome, which is the secondary HLH. Interferon beta uh, is an immunomodulatory enhancement of innate and adaptive immunity, which has been used before in mers -Cold. So those are some other therapeutics. Again, the evidence is not, is not great for any of these uh, medications. Uh, but some, some expert opinion suggests using them. 
there are some studies that looking at some of these medications, so we'll wait and see um, if those studies will pan out. These are my contact information. If you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to uh, email me or tweet at me. Um, thank you so much uh, for listening, and I'll look forward to your questions.